Okay, next up we have House File 2032. Representative Hampson, would you like to move your bill? Thank you, Madam Chair. I would move House File 2032 to be laid over for possible inclusion. And members, what we're going to do is, uh, well, not laid over for possible inclusion, but just laid over until okay. Thursday. Uh, so I'm, I'd like, and I know we're, time is short, is to have the testifiers that are here. Uh, we will bring the bill back up on Thursday, so there would be amendments due tomorrow at 3 o'clock, right, Mr. Strohmeyer? Um, so that's the intent, uh, is we will not pass the bill out today, but we will just lay it over until Thursday, take amendments, and hopefully pass the bill out uh, on Thursday afternoon. So uh, I would go right to the testifiers, uh, just because uh, I know there are a few in the audience as well. Ms. Nash. Welcome. Please introduce yourself for the record. Thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Becca Nash. I'm the director of the LCCMR, the Legislative Citizen Commission on Minnesota Resources, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here today to present on House File 2032, which is the LCCMR's 2019 funding recommendations from the Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund. I think in the interest of time, I'll skip the background and history. I know I was here before the committee earlier this session. Um, this bill contains the recommendations from the LCCMR, which um, typically result from a multi-stage competitive process. We receive proposals from applicants all across the state of Minnesota um, in response to our annual request for proposal. LCCMR members review those proposals, they evaluate them, they hear presentations, they're able to ask questions of the proposers. Research projects undergo additional external scientific peer review. And then the top selected projects are put into bill form and must be approved by a supermajority of LCCMR members. The amount available for spending each year is written into the Constitution. It's up to 5.5% of the value of the fund on June 30th of the even years. The amount available for this fiscal year, fiscal 20, was $61 million. However, as a result of laws that were passed in 2018, uh, approximately $7.84 .8, million was appropriated for debt service to be paid out of the amount available. So we subtracted that amount from the $61 million, um, which resulted in $53.5 million available for the LCCMAR to recommend and is representative of the bill that's before you today. There are several handouts in your packet. I just want to draw your attention to a couple of them. One it contains some um, a pie chart, and this is just a visual representation of how the recommendations match up with the subdivisions in the bill, which also correspond to LCCMAR's priority areas. On the back side of this handout um, is a breakdown of the affiliation of the um, proposers. So this is where to whom the money would go. And then at the bottom is a um, visual of the impact of these projects throughout the state. Also included in your um, packets should be a spreadsheet, multi-page spreadsheet, and this just lists the project, project by project with the amount in case it's easier for you to follow along that way. And unless there are any questions, Madam Chair, I would just go through the bill subdivision by subdivision and um, take questions as we go. Um. If there are other testifiers, I uh, would like to get them on the record today as well. Um, Jerry Anson, do you have a preference? If we could take testifiers, I think. All right. Be good. Please introduce yourself for the record. Uh, Chair and members, my name is Aaron Clems, and I'm the Director of Public Engagement at the Minnesota Center for Environmental Advocacy. We're a nonprofit. Uh, public advocacy and law firm that's defended Minnesota's environment using the law and science since 1974. And we'd like to commend the LCCMR for yet another year of really good work at identifying valuable projects that protect, conserve, preserve, and enhance Minnesota's natural resources and environment. The citizen-driven process has done a tremendous amount of good since voters approved the constitutional amendment in 1988, and we're really happy to support the vast majority of 2032. We're also very appreciative of the bipartisan efforts that a number of folks on this committee and elsewhere uh, undertook to fix a significant error in the 2018 bonding bill. HF 80, one of the first bills passed this session and signed by the governor, reversed an unconstitutional allocation, in our view, from the Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund that would have obligated over $8 million a year in debt service for appropriations bonds for 20 years. 
we're really grateful for the bipartisan work that went into fixing this and funding these projects they're normal and traditional sources of funding which is general obligation bonding that's why I regret to say that we must once again object to the inclusion of grants in HF 2032 that in our view commit the same errors and violate Minnesota's Constitution and Minnesota statutes particularly section 2 subdivision 11 a lines 25 Point one three to twenty five point thirty provide one point five million dollars funded through the Environment Natural Resources Trust Fund quote for grants for wastewater treatment projects under the water infrastructure funding program. This, in, this appropriation for wastewater treatment suffers from the same legal infirmities as the wastewater treatment appropriations from the last session in the bonding bill. And for your consideration I'd like to outline two constitutional issues that we have identified at this time. First, the appropriation for wastewater treatment violates the Constitution because the legislature would appropriate the money in the form of grants rather than loans. The amendment that established the Environment Natural Resources Trust Fund states that, quote, loans may be made up to 5% of the principal of the fund for water system improvements as provided by law. And loans are different than grants. Uh, in HF 2032, municipalities would receive $1.5 million in the form of a grant that the municipalities do not need to return to the ENRTF. And for this reason, the $1.5 million grant in ENRTF funds for the wastewater treatment, treatment violates the Minnesota Constitution in our view. Second, the appropriation for wastewater treatment violates the Constitution because the authorizing statute for the NRTF states that it, quote, may not be used as a substitute for traditional sources of funding environmental and natural resources activities, but the trust fund shall supplement the traditional sources. And here, the wastewater treatment grants in HF 2032 are infrastructure projects that have traditionally been funded by other means, such as general obligation bonds. Indeed, the legislature recently reaffirmed this traditional source of funding for these projects in HF 80, which passed and was signed by the governor. To be very clear, MCEA supports increased funding for wastewater treatment plants and the good work the Public Facilities Authority does. We've advocated strongly for these kinds of projects in the past in HF80 <coughs> and elsewhere and continue to support additional funds to meet the nearly $5 billion in additional needed in wastewater infrastructure spending over the next 20 years that the MPCA survey recently identified. But the magnitude of this need is the exact reason why the ENRTF statute limited the amount of money that could be loaned for that purpose. And why the statute may also makes it clear that ENRTF funds may not be used as a substitute for traditional sources of funding because the need is so great it would swallow the entire fund. Chairman Hansen and members of the committee, MCA stands ready to work with you to meet the important need for wastewater infrastructure in a manner that's consistent with the Minnesota Constitution, existing statutes, and the will of Minnesota voters. I'm happy to work with anybody on this committee in that, and toward that end, and I'm happy to test, answer any questions that you may have. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Are there any other testifiers in the audience? Anyone wishing to testify for or against the bill? <coughs> and are there any questions for either of our testifiers this afternoon? All right. Seeing none, uh, Representative Hanson, would you like to make any remarks? Well, uh, I would uh, thank the committee. I'm sure we'll have a continued discussion uh, with amendments on Thursday. Um, and I would renew my motion that the bill be laid over. Representative Hansen renews the motion that House File 2032 be laid over.